Hey guys, I'm Avru and welcome back to my channel. So this will be the second video of the series building microsas using AI from scratch. In the very last video, we got a microsas idea from the internet. And then we prompted that idea in an AI tool called data button. And now we already have a very minimal UI to work on. And in this video, we'll start to polish that UI, add an authentication layer and make sure that the UI is ready to be integrated with a Python backend. Let's do that. So we already have this UI up now. I think the next thing would be a bit more iteration over this UI. So maybe the one of the thing which we can do is add a header, uh, like a nav bar. Let me start with a new thread. So what I would do is I'll just say, uh, would you please uh, add a nav bar and a nice uh, title for this app. And let's see what it comes up with. And if this works, that would be pretty cool. It's updating the app now. As you can see, it's reading the app, writing the code for us. And the, the entire code, it will go through it. So it's validating the new code, reviewing the code for the app as well. And it's saving the app. And now it has something for us. Okay, it's not bad. It's called as Content Genie. Uh, okay, cool. I would like to have this whole stuff uh, within a card. Can we have the entire widgets? within a card and uh, yeah i think okay let's try until this let's see how it goes uh, meanwhile when we have this thing uh, getting updated i'll just look for a nice background drop image so what i would do is unsplash and i go there unsplash and i look for some Maybe we can just go with this one. Okay, I came up with this and I'll just copy the image URL. Okay, so we have something. Now it is, as you can see, it's within a card now. That's super cool. And we uh, add a background image. Do you think uh, you can add this link? So I'm just giving it this unsplash link and I want that as a background image. I think that might make it look cooler. Uh, until now, it's not bad. It's pretty good. Everything by via prompting we are making it work uh, once we do this we'll just straight go towards the back end or the capability uh, maybe before that we can also add a, a authentication wrapper i will also go to that so the background image has been added to your home page you like to make further adjustment uh, i don't see any changes out here okay uh, let's see uh, okay so it shows in the code it has added the background image but i see it's an example no worries what i would do this time is i'll just manually update it okay go back here we have it done so this is another option which i really like that you can just edit the code and we have our ui more or less out there all just via prompting okay i didn't write a single line of code except this part where i uh, added this thing cool not bad uh, the other part which comes here is the authentication wrapper uh, maybe we can wrap up this whole stuff within an authentication as well so data button comes with its own auth wrapper with every new app. Click auth wrapper. We will see this particular UI or this particular template with it, which data button always comes up with. And uh, there is already an error which I see in the console out here. So it says that auth service is not initialized. Check out the docs. So basically I just copy this link. I will paste it here. I think this takes two data buttons adding authentication uh, documentation. So I'll just go here quickly and we'll follow the exact process. Uh, but if you see the code out here, this error, which is saying that Firebase auth is not initialized, it's mainly because of this particular few kind of empty strings, which are there. So what we need, we need is a Firebase config. So this Firebase config, we can get from the Firebase console. So the authentication is using Firebase, which is one of the most popularly used service for authentication. It's from Google. So all I will do is I'll go to Firebase console and uh, the next step was to get this config file. But before doing that, I need to create a project. So I'll just create a first project, which is uh, called as, let's say, SaaS uh, demo. And we will just press continue. We hit the continue button. And the next part will be just, you know, I'll just select the account, which is my email ID, whatever email ID you can choose. The default account Firebase. And I create the project. It just takes like a minute or two to once this is set up, we just need to give a nickname to our app. That's something which we need. 
and then we will copy the entire config file from there it's pretty straightforward just click this continue out here now once i click the continue we go to this particular like sas demo with this whole project we enter here next thing will be to click on this web once i click here it said register app so i'll just say sas uh, demo that's our app name or we can just say uh, content uh, genie uh, by the way, all this we can change later as well. So it's not a big deal. Or you can just set up a different Firebase project altogether for your uh, for your particular SaaS app. So once we have this, you see this entire config file. We can just copy it right now from here. And meanwhile, we just press continue to console. The things which we copied out here, it's something which is super important for us. Why? Because that's what we need in this particular place which is now as a dummy so we paste it here so we have this part already next we do few more stuff here let's let's go back we are here to authenticate so we'll enable the authentication and for authentication we just hit get started once we have the get started thing you'll see like a couple of options come up one is the sign in method templates usage and settings we need the sign in method one of the sign in method will be the email and password we enable it and we just hit the save button. That's all. Another one, which will be Google. So we have now set up with two kinds of uh, provider. One is the email, another is the Google. Super cool. And as you can see, there are no users yet. The next part will be to have the settings option. And in settings option, we need to do two things. Like we have to go to authorized domains. We just copy the link from here. If you just go to this details step, we need to add databutton.com as one of the authorized domain. So all I will do is add domain, press it here. That's one of them. It's other parties, when we deploy this app, the app usually, if you are not using your own custom domain, you need to give the name of your app. It's for me, it's offroad.databutton.app. For you, it will be your name.databutton.app. So I'll just copy this part. I will go back here and I will paste it here and I add it here. That's all. These are the two steps which you need to do in authorized domains. And once this part is done, we can, we, I think we have already followed each and every other steps. Now this last part, which we need to do here. Yeah. Firebase project name. So this is very important. We have to have a Firebase project name. We can actually add it like this. There's a prompt already for it. How we add that. Otherwise, let's let's try with the prompt first, okay? So what it would do is, I just want to say that I would need you to uh, add my Firebase project name in the secrets. Can you help me doing that? So you have to store this project name. You can do it going to the config page and just add it yourself manually. Otherwise, you just write a prompt and the prompt is given in that documentation as well. So could you please provide the project ID value from your Firebase configuration? This will use as a value for Firebase project name. Perfect. So I just give this particular name. I just give this here and I just enter. And now, so it just asks for me a value to update. So I just put it up here and hit the send button. So it will just now go and store it in data buttons secret. So I don't think this part is required out here. As long as we have it here, Firebase project, you see, we just need to update here. That's the value which we need to update here. Actually, we can just test it now. So if I just want to do with test at the rate uh, gmail.com and let's say the password is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And I just hit the continue button. It's signing in. So it's signed up now. And just to confirm, I'm going to go back to this user's place. You see, I have test at the rate gmail. So we set up the authentication. Now, once we have this part, I would like to have few more changes here. If we now sign in, we need to have a logout button as well. That's very important. So I'll just ask a few more things to our agent to make changes in our app right now. So I would uh, like to integrate auth wrapper and there must be a... So I just want the auth wrapper now to be implemented, by the way. If you, if you have not seen that, I used a hashtag. So whenever we use this hashtag, all the backend, like the capabilities or all the UI components, everything will pop up. That's how you can connect with your UI components or the reusable components or with your backend or the capability. That's easy it is. So that's what I use out here, a hashtag 
to make sure that I tell the agent that use that particular component which is available for you and use that in this particular page. So this UI component which you have created or which came up with the zero button app by default is now used in this particular page. Let's see how well this code is written by the AI agent. If it doesn't work, we'll debug it, but let's hope it works well. So now it's again saying that it's reconsidering. Maybe there is some bug out here. It's trying to fix it. So it's writing the code in the app now. We can always open our uh, console button as well. And let's see. As you can see, the home page is now protected with auth wrapper component and logout button has been added to the nav bar. Would you like to test the authentication floor, make any further adjustment? But I already see there is something which is not working. Let's see if this is a bug which the agent can fix or not. So I see this particular bug here, okay? This linter already shows us the bug out here. And I feel the agent failed uh, to rectify it. So I just say, I see an uh, error here. And I think, uh, I hope that this would be uh, quite useful enough for the agent to fix it now. Let's see if it works or not. It did implement a logout logic at least out here I see. I'm not sure where the logout button is. Uh, we can just look for it as well, but I hope it would work. I don't see the linter here anymore. Let's go back here. Oh yeah, the logout button is there. And does it work? Oh yeah, it works with uh, dark and light mode toggle as well. That's pretty cool. And we can just log it out, log out from here. But I don't see the login now. So I just again ask, can you make sure to implement the wrapper? I don't uh, see the... So I just say that, can you make sure to implement it? Because I really don't see it here. Or maybe it's something we are missing. I can just refresh it again, but let's see. So I still, actually I see this auth wrapper here, uh, but I don't see it. Maybe uh, we should have this logic up that if the logout button is pressed, it should go back to the main screen of auth wrapper. Maybe that was, that was something which I, I think I missed to say it in my prompt. It would be nice if we have that option. Let's see what it comes up with. If not, we'll just say that loud and clear in the prompt. If I just make a quick refresh of this stuff, I see for a very split second, it is working. So let me narrate this as a prompt properly to our AI agent. It failed another time, by the way. Uh, I could see it failed another time. It's writing it again. So you can see the timestamps out here. It's failing. It's trying again. Just be happy to see where it's going wrong. So this particular place, the navigate part, I think that's where it's failing. Uh, cannot find name, use navigate. It will be navigate. So hopefully it did fix now. I don't see the bug and it's working on it again. Let's see if the agent is smart enough to understand. Who so the use navigate hook has been imported and used to handle redirection after logging out. Please check out if the log logout function works as expected. Would you like to proceed to any other change? Moment of truth. Oh, let's reload it. Let's see. Oh yes, we have something. Let's log out. It's saying page not found. So I'll just make it as explicit as possible. So when I hit this logout button, it's saying page not found. So I say that if I hit the logout button, it shows page not found. However, I would like to go back to the author upper component so the users can log in again. So just reviewing the code. Let's see if it can work or not. So I'll give another try. If I log out, still I need button. So I'm giving another try, okay? So let's see if now it has. Okay, so we have something now. We have something, we have continue with Google and we have uh, this one. So let's tr try with test at the gmail.com and we have one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three and we hit the continue button, we signed in here. Okay, we just don't care about this and we hit the logout button and we are, we are, we are outside. Perfect, this works. So logout functionality has been updated to ensure the authentication. State is fully cleared and reset. So the error was the state was not fully cleared. 
and reset before redirecting to the auth wrapper component. Please check if the issue is resolved. Would you like to proceed with any other changes? I think this is pretty cool. Let's uh, log in with the Google ones. Okay, perfect. So we are already here now. Okay, and uh, I think this is pretty good start. Now the next part starts where we need to integrate a backend service with our submit button. So for the backend service, I was uh, thinking we can use uh, something called as Langchain. That's one of my favorite uh, orchestration tool for LLM orchestration tool. We use Langchain YouTube downloader. So let me Google quickly, Langchain YouTube uh, loader. So that way, any URL is passed. It just converts to the YouTube transcripts. I think it should be pretty straightforward. Langchain has its YouTube loader. Once it loads the whole stuff, we pass it to uh, OpenAI, or the latest model, as I mentioned before. And then we just use the LLM to generate the thread. We can do a lot of stops once we have the transcript from a YouTube URL. So next step would be creating the backend for the submit button. When the submit button is triggered, the backend, the API will be called and the API will be written as a fast API router, which is written purely in Python. And that's what would be our next step to create this backend. Maybe we need two backends, one for loading, one for generating the thread and the social media posts. We will do both of them. So let's see how we can do that all just conversationally.